Hello YouTube, welcome back to my channel. In today's video we are going to be working with some Phalaenopsis orchids again. And before I get started on this guy that's on the table here, I just wanted to give you an update. A lot of people have um, been requesting an update on how the fowl is doing that we repotted a few months back. Now this was a fowl that had a bunch of rotten roots and it was in one of those big pots that had no drain holes in it. The spag moss was just um, completely crushing the roots and we took it all apart repotted it up at the time it still had a flower stalk on it so i just wanted to give you a quick update on it and how it's doing um, the flower stalk never did do anything so after about a month i cut it off i didn't want it sucking out any more energy from the plant than it needed and we'll talk a little bit more about flower stalks over here and, and how they affect the plant growth so after I cut the flower stalk off, we do have a new leaf coming up here. But more importantly, because this guy was full of rotten roots, I just wanted to show you all the new roots that we have growing in here. So there is a root here, it's about an inch long. There's another one here, it's about an inch long as well. They have nice bright sort of green tips on them, so I know they're growing and healthy. If we turn it around right underneath here, there's a third root and it is growing nicely as well it's hard to make that angle there but hopefully you can see it and there's another root back here so this thing has one two three four five roots coming out on it all together now so it looks like it's going to be happy and healthy and make a good recovery it's still very wobbly in the pot so i got to be careful with it for now uh, you could take a stake and just stick it in and sort of um, tie it to it so it doesn't wobble. Worst thing that can happen is when these new roots are forming, it wobbles around and the new roots will actually break. But that is a little update on that one. What I'll do maybe, if you didn't see the video where we rescued this one, I'll put a link in the description below to that video. But as I say, I know a number of you have been asking how the plant is doing and I think it will be um, fine after a, a little bit of a recovery here. So I'll put that guy back over here for now. And you have to excuse the brightness. It's mid afternoon here in the greenhouse. It is really bright and sunny. The door is open over there. Uh, the vents are all open. The fans have actually got turned down. So it's, it's quite warm in here right now. Um, up above 80 degrees. So anyways, what I wanted to show you today was this fowl here. Now this is by no means going to be any kind of rescue. It has been recently repotted. It has got great leaves on it. They're big, they're healthy. Uh, it's getting lots of bright light in the new greenhouse. As you can see, even just um, the light reflecting off me, it's really, really bright, almost too bright. But what we're going to do with this guy today is I'm gonna have a look and I'm gonna assess some of the roots that have died and see which roots are healthy, which roots aren't. And we're gonna cut those off together. And we're also going to work with this stem here. This is an old spike. Now, what is seeming to have happened to this, it's not doing much of anything. And it's not flowering, it's not really growing all that much. Not like it should be for this time of year. And I think this old spike, which is doing absolutely nothing, is really sucking the energy out. I can see it's already been cut off once here. It's had a second go. I think it's gonna be time just to remove this spike and let this plant start to recover again. I can wait for this to bloom and maybe by next year we'd have one flower on it again or I can cut this stake or spike off and we will get a new spike and next year we will have a full new batch of blooms for this. So it's a trade-off. You, you cut it off now, you lose one flower, but you get a whole bouquet of flowers next year and I think it will um, stimulate some growth in that. One interesting point, fowls usually flower under the third leaf so as long as you have three leaves you're good to go. So we have one, two, three. So I could expect a, a spike to come out from under here, or there's even this one here. This might be the third leaf. And anyways, it will come out on either side of here or maybe even both. Um, but why don't I take the camera down and that way we can have a look at the table here and we can work on this guy together and get her done up nice and quickly. Okay, so why don't we start with getting rid of the spike before we start with the roots. That way um, we can clean that up nice and easily and quickly. Just gonna loosen up the tripod here. So 
the spike goes all the way up. Here's the tip of it. It's very much just sort of a, a tip waiting to sort of bloom one more flower on it. Not worth keeping to suck all the energy out. And what we're going to do is we're just going to cut this off and we're going to cut it off. And you can see these little white bars. We're going to cut it off about there. And that way it's still going to be sticking up a little bit just like this one was. In case any kind of bacteria was to get in there where the cut is, the bacteria will usually stop at the node. Now to prevent any kind of, oops, to prevent any kind of um, spread of bacteria or disease, I have gone ahead and I have sterilized my scissors ahead of time with some rubbing alcohol. I left it in there for a good long time. Um, they just sat in the solution for a couple minutes and then I just let it evaporate. Another method is after sitting it in there, you can actually um, just light the lighter and the alcohol will burn off, which is another method to sterilize them. So what I'm going to do is just give this guy a good cut right about there. So if you come in a little closer, you can see now foul stakes or, or spikes, they're quite tough. So you got to give it a good snip. And there we go. And now that's going to come right off. And for now, I will put that right there. And that gives us a good look at this little spike here. So now that it has an open end to it, what I'm going to do is just take this. This is a homemade solution I have in a used bottle. This was just safer soap. I make an alcohol soap combination and I'm just going to give it a little spray there. And we'll come back to this product in a few minutes, but I'm just going to, the alcohol in it will just sterilize the tip there so no bacteria gets in there and it will be just a healthy um, steak as it dries out. The other thing we're going to look at today is it has a surplus of roots. Now it's in need of a good water, that's why they're sort of the silver color but it has a few dead ones as well. So we're just going to trim them up a little bit and I can show you the difference between a dead root and a live root in this one quite easily. So dead roots feel very papery and thin. They're quite dried up. They um, will just sort of rip apart there. Let's see if we can focus. They'll just sort of rip apart and you're left with just this center core just like that. That piece is very tough, even when the roots are dead. Don't let that fool you. This root is very, very gone. But that center core remains in all of them. So I'm just going to feel a live root is still pretty thick and fleshy. Now this one here is a good example. It's dead on the end here. It's a little bit mushy, kind of papery. It's not going to be um, growing off of that. If anything, they'll just harbor some bacteria in there. So I'm just going to cut it off. And you can cut foul roots just above where they're... Um, dead and it will actually sprout out in a different spot. I see here's another foul root that's just below the surface there. I'm not going to unpot this as I said but this is dead too. So there's another papery thin thing. The little core probably remained in the pot but we'll still remove this and that will keep it from going rotten in the pot. Here's another one right here and let me just cut that off. Some of this is just for aesthetic purposes. The roots aren't really hurting anything, but we'll just make it look nice and clean and tidy. I think this was a side that actually um, made me decide to work on it. So here's another root here, and you can see where it is still alive and where it is dead. So we're just going to cut it right here. There's sort of already a crack, and I'm just going to cut that off there because it just goes into a dead root from there. I don't even know where this root goes. It goes into the pot. Way down in the pot. So I'm not worried about retrieving it. As I say, I just transplanted this thing not too many months ago. So I'm not oops, I'm not in the mood to undo it again. But we'll remove that one. Here's another one. So I'm not worried about these few dead roots. This guy did have a good change of environment. He was growing in a house and then he came out to the greenhouse, so it's only expected that some roots will um, die in the in the transition. One of the reasons I'm not worried, if you look here, you can see a growing tip that's nice and healthy looking. So that's the next generation of roots starting to grow on this plant here. So I'm not worried about that too much. And you'll cut that off and I'm just going to tidy it all up. They sort of wrap in and around each other and unfortunately go down into the pot but so the next time I do um, repot this of course I'll remove all the dead roots from in there 
but this is call it a spring cleaning. This one here has got a dead spot in the middle of a live root. So I'm just going to cut this off at that little break. And yeah, other than it's in need of a little drink of water there, I think it um, looks much better. And now that the spike has been cut off, it should, in the next couple months, actually probably form a new spike. I think this is a perfect time of year to do this. Lots of light, lots of warmth. It's going to just do its thing for the next couple months and be nice and happy. So, why do I have paper towel on the table, you ask? Well, that is just for my solution here. Now, last year I made a video on how we make this. This is an alcohol, a rubbing alcohol like so, water and soap uh, solution. And I'm just going to spray it on the cloth here, just like so. Now this solution is great for getting rid of aphids and helps with mealybugs and anything like that. And I'm just gonna go along and clean up the leaves a little bit. Now this is not any kind of um, leaf shine product whatsoever. This is just a soap and alcohol solution. It's not going to put anything waxy on there. It's not going to clog the pores. But if there's any kind of spider mites or mealybugs or anything like that starting, it will hopefully um, nip them in the bud. Plus it makes it look a lot better. So I'm just going to do that with it. And it's good to clean the leaves off, you know, every six months to a year anyways. They do get dusty and dirty. You can see a little bit of dirt on there. It's nothing too much. No bugs or pests in it. Yeah, we'll just give the undersides a little wipe too. But yeah, so multi-purpose. Gets rid of aphids on all your flower buds and everything. It's homemade, so it's really cheap and easy to come by. If I run out, I'm not spending $7 on the... This, this was an insecticidal soap of some kind. I use the bottle just because it's a similar product, just the homemade version of. But anyways, that is a few care tips for your Phalaenopsis orchid. I'm going to go through and probably do a few more orchids today just like this. Make sure they're nice and clean and tidy and getting ready for the summer growing season. So I hope you like this video and if you want to see more videos like this make sure you subscribe to my channel. As always, thanks for watching.